Hey, I'm Nick from Hasty Bake, and I want to tell you guys about the new HB250. The HB250 is our new super portable grill that we've geared toward people who are outdoors, who are visiting lakes and streams, who are camping, who are hiking, or the steak competitor who needs an ultra portable grill to be able to take with them on the weekend and dominate the steak trail. On the HB250 Pro, which we've geared specifically towards steak, you're going to notice an SCA emblazoned badge on the front. It's only on the Pro model. It's got the SCA logo on it. We're very proud to have worked with them in designing this grill. You will notice that this grill is a very similar model to the original 369 Portable. What we've done is we've elongated the body, so we've given you more room to put your fire in. We put shorter legs on it so it fits underneath the tonneau cover a lot better. Uh, and we've added just a little bit of weight and reinforcement to handle the extreme temperatures that our steak cookers are going to be cooking at in competition. And an awesome handle over here that makes it really easy to open and close. And inside is really where the money is. So every grill ships with a custom cut set of Grow Great brand Grow Grates. Uh, it also ships with a laser cut heat extender with an SCA logo on it and the HB logo, which we'll talk about in a minute. These grill grates go the full width of the grill from side to side. They go in the right direction to make it easy for you to scoop up your steak. Now, if you didn't want to use these grill grates, say you wanted to take this thing out to the lake for the weekend, you can remove the grill grates and you're going to see a set of custom laser cut expanded metal grates. Now, they're not true expanded metal. They're actually 11 gauge steel that have been cut to mimic expanded metal. They give you a lot of metal contact onto your meat. It's going to be great for a good Maillard searing effect. So that's the base underneath your Grow Great brand Grow Grates. Slide these back in as they go. Now every single one that we sell also includes the Grow Great spatula. And that spatula will come in the box. So it is a full true set of Grow Grates that you're going to be getting. Now here's really where it starts to count. Inside the base here, you have an ash pan. This ash pan you can line with foil if you'd like and it catches all the ash that falls out of your firebox right here. That ash pan is cross broken and TIG welded in the corners to make sure that you're going to have a very nice robust ash pan with limited uh, warpage when it comes to the extremely high temperatures that steak cookers are going to be competing at. You have your firebox here. Now normally on a hasty bake we allow this grate right here to come out. We've actually gone ahead and welded the grate into the firebox as well to make it really easy for you to dump all your ash out at the end of the competition into your pan or into your can and get back to work. So with a good welding glove or a good tool you can carry this over an ash can, open that up and do a quick dump and slide it back in, empty your ash tray out and before you know it in about five or six minutes this thing's going to be nice and cool enough for you to put a cover on it or you slide it in the back of your truck without worrying about burning anything. Now the other thing that's very important to note is this heat shield. Now it comes with this plastic on it. You'll need to peel it when you buy it. But the plastic protects this from getting too scratched up. This heat shield that we have has a, uh, a solid piece and a half piece. This half piece is where you're going to be doing your searing. So it's going to let all that fire heat through. The solid piece is going to allow you to kind of get true two-zone cooking. So you can fill your entire firebox if you'd like with coals and this will block a lot of that heat from coming up. It's still going to create heat, but it's not going to nearly be as hot as sort of this open part. Or if you'd like, you can kind of go the extra mile and take your coals when you dump them and move them over to the searing side and you'll get a really true two-zone cook. Now that's also where this heat extender, or grill, grill extender, excuse me, comes in, is on your non-searing side, you can place this grill extender on that side like so. Put your steak up there when you're done with getting your grill marks and it's going to give you a nice smooth surface to bake on that is not going to reinforce any negative grill grates. You can wrap it in foil if you'd like or leave it as is. We've tempted the difference between the primary searing grate and the top of that grate at being a 150 degree difference. So if you're searing over here at say 575, 600, 650, you're going to be down in the low 400s on that side to give you a very true bake effect. Now some guys like to get even a little further so they'll take this and they'll turn that on its side and get it up above the grow grates and you can get almost 200 degrees that way you can still get your door closed either way you can actually if you have a narrow enough steak weight you can put your steak weight on top of that on either side and still have clearance in the top of this hood 
Now, a couple tips and tricks we've learned over the last several months of really doing torture testing on the HP250 that we kind of want to let you uh, let you know on. One of them is when you're going to fill this up with coal, we encourage you to remove all your grates and fill the coal in from the top. Now, with about one chimney full size of coal and your vents on the front, which you do have a split vent on the front to give you even more control over your heat, it'll allow you to just fire up one side or the other. Your back side is a full sealed vent on the back, so if you keep the vents on the front and your exhaust in the back wide open and do one chimney full size of coal, you should be getting around 575 to 600 degrees inside here. If you need a little bit more temperature than that, because this Hasty Bake is built with a true convective design, the vents on the back are actually below grate level. So as the heat gets drawn up and circulates through the unit, it exits below grate level, creating a wonderful oven effect in the hood. What that means is, when you want to get up over 600 degrees, simply closing that hood down for a minute or two is going to get those grates nice and circulated with heat, and it's going to carry it up 625, 650, you can get up to 700 degrees or more if you wanted to. But that's going to be the trick on a convective style cooker as opposed to other cookers that are out there where the heat goes right out the top of the hood. Is to be able to gather the heat you want to get up into the 600s, just go ahead and close that vent down and allow those grill grates to get real nice and hot, and it's going to work for you. Now, when you are dumping your coal, like I said, one chimney size full of coal is normally plenty for the grilled temperatures that we like to cook at. I take all the grates out, leave the door closed, dump that coal in from the top, go ahead and do all my rearranging, then take these grates and layer everything in top and let everything start coming up to temperature. Now, we do recommend that when you're searing, you use the left side of the grill to sear and the right side of the grill to bake. The only reason for that is this beautiful emblazoned SCA logo that's there. Nice and shiny, nice and beautiful with color. If you start searing on that side, over time those colors are going to dull down. They're going to get a little dull. They're going to get not as shiny. You're going to have that badge looking not quite pretty enough. So if you sear on this side, you kind of keep that side, the cooler side, that badge is going to stay nice and pretty looking for you as long as possible. Now, if for some reason over time that badge does die out and you want a prettier badge, you can contact us and you can buy a new badge from us. We do put a heat shield on the back of the badge to guard against it, but just wanted you to kind of be aware of that fact. Another thing to think about is this is a true 304 stainless steel grill. We manufacture every single one of them by hand here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And because it's 304 stainless as opposed to cast aluminum or some other materials like that, it is going to be uh, occasionally have some swelling on it. Now, you're not going to have any permanent warpage, but because of the way steel interacts with the extreme heat that steak competitors are cooking at, it is going to have just a little bit of flex. So be aware of that on the grill. That's a completely normal thing. You might even get some discoloration when it's real hot. All of that comes off with some oven cleaner, a good polish. But because it's steel and not cast aluminum like a lot of people are used to cooking on, you kind of need to be aware of that. Something else in regards to that is... This front door is not held on with a cam latch. Those cam latches are due to failure every now and then. They're kind of hard to control. So what we actually do is we have a spring hinge clip right here made out of 18 gauge steel. That steel has no way of being tempered in the factory. It has to be tempered when the grill is used. So what that means is for your first half a dozen cooks or so, this clip in the front is going to want to stretch a little bit until it finds its home. So what we encourage you to do is when that grill is nice and hot and you'll notice your lid might kind of start popping open, sometimes it might come down like that on the first couple cooks, with a gloved hand, go ahead and take your hand on this clip that's in the front and pull this clip back. I'm talking about this little clip right here. It's in the lower part of my screen. Pull it back toward you and it's going to tighten it back up and you'll notice it'll be a little harder to close that door the first couple times. You have to slam it harder. But the more that heats up and cools down, you start tempering that clip, and eventually you'll have no issue with that clip. But it will take a few times, so don't be alarmed. And your first couple cooks or first couple times you fire it up, make sure you're kind of hanging out close to the grill. And if that door pops a little bit, just with a welding glove or some other kind of glove on your hand, go ahead and crank back on that clip by, again, pulling it toward you when you're in front of the grill and closing it back up again, and it will seal up completely fine. It comes with a 10-year warranty, as all our stainless steel Hasty Bake grills do. Again, we don't mass produce these. Every single one of them is assembled, is cut, is bent, is welded by hand. So they do take a little bit of time, but I guarantee you when you get this thing in your hands, you're going to notice the extreme craftsmanship that goes into it, the design that's going to be able to withstand the kind of heat that you need to be able to cook at the temperatures you are when your competition's steak. 
Now on the other end, non-steak model, uh, it comes with everything you see here except for the grill grates and the extender. It just has the laser cut grates underneath. Now that's going to take probably four or five pounds out of your grill, so when you're carrying it around when you're hiking or you're going down to the lake, it makes it a lot easier to be able to bring with you. Now this grill, fully loaded, weighs just over 30 pounds. When it ships, it weighs just over 40 in the box. We're very, very proud of this grill. It's had a lot of R&D that's gone into it. The design actually harkens back to the 1960s when we first started building the camper. So it's a proven design. It's nothing new as far as the style of grill or the style that it is. We've just kind of made the dimensions a little bit taller, a little bit deeper, allowed for a deeper firebox on it, and made it as versatile as we possibly could in a grill this size. Now, a lot of our other Hasty Bake models have versatility built in by either a pull chain or a crank handle to be able to raise and lower your firebox. That mechanism, though, that lift mechanism, tends to add about 10 pounds to the grill. We're really trying to reduce as much poundage on this grill as possible. So one other option you have, if you're just saying, man, I don't like how far away that firebox is from the grate, is you can take this firebox up and move it up to these rail systems and get an even hotter searing temp. Now, that's probably going to put you up over seven or 800 degrees if you have a full chimney size in there, but want to let you know that that is an available option for you. It's going to be a little hard to use your heat shield, but if you move your coals over to one side, you can still get two zone cooking. But again, to start, we recommend you put this in the bottom position with your heat shield on the top. In the top position, you're going to notice that the depth of that is about the same distance you're going to have in a standard PK grill. In the lower position, it's going to be the depth you have in a Weber grill. So if you're coming for another grill and you're upgrading to a Hasty Bake, you're going to be real comfortable with being able to move your firebox around in the positions that you're used to until you really kind of begin to master the grill and understand how all those distances and the heat travels throughout the entire grill. It's a little bit of a learning curve whenever you get any kind of new grill, but we're confident you're going to be extremely happy with the workmanship on this grill, with the way that it performs. Like I said, we've torture tested it for months and we're very happy with it. If you do have questions about it, please reach out to Hasty Bake. We're more than happy to answer any questions you have. But wanted to give you a couple of those tips and tricks. Closing the lid to gather your convective heat, searing on the left hand side, and also how to load your firebox and how to adjust the door to tighten that thing up. Those quick tips are things we've noticed in the last week or two as people have been getting the grills that they've had questions on. So we wanted to address them right here and give you a little bit of a tour of the HB250. We're very happy with the grill. We hope you are too. Please reach out, send us your pictures, send us your comments. Uh, thank you for being the best part of Hasty Bake and hope you enjoy your new favorite grill.